Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Greetings from Castle Goring, from Nikki, Aurora and from me. Well, 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 I have a lot of ground to cover today. So I am going to plunge right in and I am going to, oh, uh, basically at this time, pretty much avoid any mention of the Aviation Award, except to read out what Monica Gaynor said. Spare definitely deserves the AD Aviation Award. Who else can fly Megan's broomskeet stick any more skillfully? <laughs> I just thought I had to put that in. Sorry. Uh, we have really rather weightier and more interesting matters, I think, to cover today. So I'm going to cover them. Uh, starting out with what events person says. What are the odds that Megan the sociopath starts leaking on to awful things about the health of Princess Catherine and the King? Then stories of Harry preparing to do his duty and step up as regent, while Megan worries about relocating the children to London. <laughs> Well, events person, you're obviously in PR and you know the game. And doesn't Meg's baby know it as well? Well, uh, I gather, I mean, I don't do social media, but I gather that there are a lot of very poisonous things being posted on social media at the very same moment that you wrote that and that I'm saying this with pretty awful stories about Catherine's health especially. Uh, well first of all Harry has not been stood down as a counsellor of state because as I've tried to point out before he has it by right as a result of the Regency Acts of 37, 43 and 53. But he's not going to be called upon to be a Council of State, nor will Andrew. That's why Princess Anne and Prince Edward and Princess Beatrice were dropped into the mix, so to speak. Any of these stories that are planted from the Montecito morons will be very obviously moronic and obviously unbelievable in much the same way that I gather, and I'm going to say it because it's so ludicrous, that Catherine, who has a stomach that's flatter than a coffee table, all of a sudden went in for a tummy tuck. <laughs> I mean, you really couldn't make any of this up, could you? Then we have Wendy Carter saying, so how is Marker going to trump Catherine's hospital stay? She must be spitting feathers. Oh, I gather actually that she's had a miscarriage. So maybe she was spitting feathers. But from where is the question? Naughty moi. Mm. So she had a miscarriage, I suppose. Oh, yes, well. <laughs> Ominous, no? Because rarely, when you stop to think of it, Meghan and Harry have been so malicious about his relations, and she's been about her own, and not great respecters of fact as we would know it to be. making things up 
ridiculous. Anyway, Mrs. Hercule Poirot says, I know that Megan is, no, sorry, <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. I know that Lauren is happy that Jeff bought her new ones. <laughs> I love it. But I wish she put them away. If he is dumb enough to actually marry her, I shudder to think what her wedding gown will look like. Well, he's not dumb, nor is she, actually. I have some very good reports of her. Now, admittedly, her taste is not mine. <laughs> Let me put it that way. You know, she dresses the way a design student or model in the late 1960s and early 70s would have dressed when she weighed 105 pounds. There is something rather tasteless about a woman who is so well developed, uh, displaying her wares. <laughs> But say what you will about her, she and he are very much authentically their Arifist selves. And in a funny sort of way, I actually think that degree of vulgarity actually has style. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's not the style that one would emulate or wish to aspire to, but it's style nevertheless. I mean, <laughs> such grotesquely bad taste that it is actually stylish. They are going to end up being style icons. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's unbelievable. Well, Far Al says, good morning, Lady C. Good morning. Well wishes to you and the family. Thank you. I just saw where Harry has dropped his lather suit against the mail on Sunday. Any interests into I? Sorry, any interesting insights into I? I never miss a video and I'm so grateful for them. They get me through my mornings with a smile and some edification to boot. Sincerely, Far Al. Well, Far Al, I suppose I can add to what I said originally. Mr. Justice Nicklin is the main libel stroke, slander stroke, defamation judge in this country. And I have also said that he oversaw my libel action against the mirror. And he's no fool and he can't be duped by clever, in quotes, arguments. The clever dicky birds like those idiots who the mirror had or David Sherborne came up with in Harry's matter. I think I may declare at the time that I fully expected that Mr. Justice Nicklin would rule the way he did. And remember, Harry had to pay, I think it was £48,000 costs by the 29th of December, if I remember correctly, because Harry had tried to get their defence struck out because he was suing them because they basically said that he was spinning his story about wanting to pay for his security in the case he had against Ravek and the Home Office. Well, he settled 
a few minutes before they were due to exchange documents. Now, when you have to exchange documents, you have in this country to provide everything that you have that's in your favor and everything that's in your disfavor as well. Also, Mr. Justice Nicklin, when he refused to strike out the Mail on Sunday's defense, he gave very sound reasons why he thought the Mail on Sunday had an arguable case. And if you recall, at the time I said, I don't believe in predictions, but of what I understood the matter to be, Harry didn't have much of a chance of winning while the Mail on Sunday did. Mr. Justice Nicklin's judgment in the strike out action that Harry brought against the Mail on Sunday was very interesting because he basically said that he believed that Harry and his people were pulling a fast one and trying to get the public to believe something that the evidence did not necessarily suggest. Harry was suing on the basis of the fact that they had defamed him by effectively calling him a liar. And Mr. Justice Nicklin, in his judgment, was basically saying, well, I don't know, but I sort of think you could well be a liar. And there was almost a hint of, and most likely are. Well, if Harry had gone, first of all, if he had exchanged documents, they would have had the right to go through every document he presented, which would be a very expensive process. And it was obvious that they were going to, those, the discovery of those documents would contain revelations that were inconvenient and that would militate against Harry's having a victory. So that was a very pressing need why he had to settle. Also, he's down about a three quarter of a million pounds in costs. His and the Mail on Sundays, plus the 48,000 he has already had to stump up to Associated Newspapers. And that's because before the case actually got to court in a full-blown trial, at which point he would have been looking at maybe costs to himself of two million pounds and costs to the other side of a million and a half at least. And he has already recently had to stump up quite or will be having to stump up I should say the ruling has gone against him in terms of total victory in the other action the mirror action where Mr Justice Fancourt presided he's down millions of pounds already and he was looking at being down a whole heap more. But you see, he's married to Rachel Zane. Ah, well, you know, H, we're royalty and everybody's going to believe us. And if we say it, it's so, so just sue. And you know, when I was with my law firm, uh, we'd always just apply to get something struck out and it was. And of course, the game worked at first when they were covered in royal respectability. 
but now that they are covered in untoward lack of respectability, they are having rulings going against them because it was one thing, let me put it this way, the nun gives evidence, everybody thinks she's truthful. It turns out she's running a racket on the side. The court isn't impressed by her ha habit and clothes habit. You know, a nun wears a habit. I'm not referring to any sort of other habits that might spring to mind. So, I think that about summarizes it. He was going to lose the judgment from Mr. Justice Nickling made it clear that but for a miracle he was going to lose, that he had indeed done exactly what the Mail on Sunday said, which was try to snow everybody and it didn't work. Poor age. Poor age. And to think that fingers crossed. Oh, I might one day be king. Oh, fingers crossed. Meg, I'm going to put you on a throne. No, not one of those 16 thrones. A real throne. Oh, age. You're so wonderful. I've always loved you so much. I loved you before I even met you or knew me. I mean, everything that you've told me about yourself is so organically correct. And I've never Googled you, still haven't aged, still know nothing about the royal family. Now, what did you say your granny's name was? Uh, mm. Fabulous Newt says, apart from anything, if Catherine was to say what the problem was, and from reading various comments, it is one of several quite common problems. If something were to go amiss, infection, relapse, etc., it will scare women awaiting similar procedures. It's none of our business. We can all go to our graves not knowing, and our lives will not be poorer for it. It's her private business. She is a public figure, not public property. I couldn't agree more. You know, I'm actually going to tell you something that shows why I am so very much in favour of Catherine doing exactly what she's comfortable with. You know, she has an innate sense of dignity. People who have an innate sense of dignity don't necessarily want to do certain things. Uh, I mean, and they don't want to reveal certain things. And it's not that they're ashamed, it's that well, it's rather like a flatus in the middle of a diplomatic reception. No, even better, flatus in the middle of a concert, just at the moment that the orchestra has gone silent. Embarrassing. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's not morally wrong. But so... There's that aspect to it, that people get embarrassed over natural things. They get embarrassed over things that may not embarrass other people. And also, they just don't want their dignity to be suffering. They don't want their privacy to be invaded. And I think, I really feel strongly about this because I know what it's like to have my privacy invaded, and it was in the most appalling way. And it was so 
It's like peeling off your skin. Awful, awful. Also, you know, there are s uh, several conditions that require a length of stay of that nature. And also, she's a mother with young children. It's safer to be out of the home. If you've had anything ab abdominal, you should not be picking up children. You shouldn't be bending over. You shouldn't be, there's certain things you shouldn't do for a while. And if you are in a home environment, you're far more tempted to do them than if you're not. So these are just practical reasons. I mean, I do wish people, and of course, I, I was going to say, I do wish people would understand that, that curiosity and interest are not always the same thing. And I'm delighted that everybody on this channel seems to understand that we should respect her privacy and that we want to and that everybody else should respect it. But you know, when I had sepsis also, it took me a lot longer to recover than I thought it would. And I didn't realize how ill I was. And I thought, oh, three weeks, a month, whatever. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to be fine in three days, sort of thing. Well, it took me a year to get back my strength fully, a year. And I'm going to tell you another little thing about my situation, which impacts upon why caution is a very good thing. I had a wonderful dog called Philippe. He was a Springer Spaniel. He was one of my last Springer Spaniel daughters. No, he was her brother. The, he was Totti's son. And no, he, he was Maud's son. And he was, he was Totti's brother. Sorry. <laughs> confusing and he swallowed and this is about abdominal surgery how very dangerous it is he's we had been in Grand Cayman for my mother's funeral and we came back and he ate one of the boy's underpants and of course it caused an obstruction and they operated and he wasn't right afterwards and he went back into the hospital and he ultimately died of septicemia or peritonitis, whatever you call it, because anything abdominal is very dangerous and anything to do with the gut is very dangerous. And to me, it was devastating because he was only three years old and I loved him madly and he loved me madly. I, so the point I'm trying to make is anything abdominal requires great caution and I don't think we need to know exactly what happened. And I'm glad that all of you agree with me. And on that note, I'll move on to Andy Lynn says, Poor Catherine, I hope her recovery is an easy one and that her privacy is respected. Let's just pray that Megan the Viper doesn't learn anything about the surgery. If she does, 
you know her privacy will be violated. <laughs> well, that's your opinion, and my dear, going off the evidence of her conduct, you are fully entitled to express it. Also, I'm not sure Megan actually ever needs to know what's what was wrong. I mean, she's never been limited by fact in the past. So why would she necessarily be limited by fact now? That's a possibility. But yes, in much the same way that she managed to get Amid Scabies to accuse Catherine. Oh, I'm sure she'd find a way those two plastic creatures together. Amid Scabies and Megsy Baby. Is your plastic surgeon, you know, he does really fantastic things. <laughs> yes, I know. And when I'm under the anesthetic, if you don't mind, my mouth's going to slip. And please make sure that you don't attribute it to me. But get it out there. LKB says... Not wanting to invade anyone's privacy, I simply hope your inside information could tell us if we can stop holding our breath regarding PC. Yes, there's no need to hold your breath. Okay? Insofar as I am aware, there's no need to hold your breath. Wendy Hardy says, I've had abdominal surgery and it's normal for a six to eight week recovery. So I don't think people should jump the gun and paint the situation as dire. I thought I'd read those out because I thought they were, were very important to put things in context. Teresa Faria says, Lady C, I thank you and respect you for respecting the Princess of Wales's privacy, but can you at least tell us if she will be completely healed after this? Meaning, will she be okay going forward? Thank you. In so far as I am aware, yes. It's nice that people are so concerned, but I don't think they need to worry too dramatically. Kitty says, Dear Lady C, the news of two senior royals' health issues has highlighted the need to extend a pool of working royals instead of minimizing it. Do you think, no, if this has perhaps made the King and Prince William reconsider their strategy for a reduced monarchy? Will they finally prompt, will this finally prompt them to recruit more working royals like the York girls, the Tyndalls, Lady Louise and Viscount Seven when they're older? perhaps even some of the Kents, Prince Michael's children, etc. At least on a part-time basis, if not permanent. The Harkers are out of the question as they can never be trusted again. Not even has been. Also, what do you think of Robert Hardman's new book about the King and the Royal Family? How reliable are his sources, given that he cited some senior sources from both BP and KP? Well, this is several questions, so I'm going to hopefully wing it. I have said all along, and indeed Tom Sykes in The Daily Beast, as somebody else has said, uh, has just quoted me extensively because I have been saying for years that slimming down the monarchy too much was a mistake. I was the very first person to say it. And the reason why I was in a position to say it was that I have over the decades done a lot of charity work. And so I know how thin on the ground royals are and how they need to spread themselves very thinly to be effective. And that 98% of what they do is never reported upon. And so you need a team that's large enough to be able to go north, south, east, west, and disperse in all directions and fulfill the need. If 
it becomes apparent that there are not sufficient royals to fill the need. And it becomes apparent that everybody manages perfectly well without the royals, which actually is not true, certainly not where fundraising is concerned. But people will ultimately forget if they have to manage without the royals, that the royals brought something to the table. And once they've forgotten it, the royals are redundant. They are no longer needed. That's one issue. The Tyndalls are not royalty. They are not members of the royal family. The York girls are. And Prince James and Princess Louise of Edinburgh are as well otherwise known as Lady Louise Windsor and Lord Severn. But that's what they are. They are actually Prince James and Princess Louise of Edinburgh. And will they ultimately be incorporated? I mean, you know, all of this has happened in the very recently. Uh, I think the last thing on anybody's mind at the moment is expanding the family. But Princess Anne said it towards the end of last year. So let me see what if I've missed. What do I think of Robert Hardman's new book? I've not read it yet. I've not had the time. I'm going to read it. I've met Robert Hardman. He actually took me to lunch many years ago, trying to pick my brain. Fatal error. <laughs> I have a mouse like a steel trap, like a mausoleum. If I don't want to say something, I never say it. But he was perfectly pleasant and all the rest of it, and he is certainly one of the journalists who has a very good palace connections and knows how to play the game oh it's a i off everything i've heard and everything i know of him it's going to be a good book it's going to be sound it's going to be solid oh i can see where in interviews, he's quite careful to not say and do certain things, but I'm sure it's a good book and well worth reading. So I would encourage anybody who's interested in the subject to buy it and read it. And yes, his sources are very reliable. That doesn't mean, however, that everything is going to be 100% accurate. I don't know until I've read it, but I would have said that by and large, it's going to be a very reliable. Vivian Howe says, apart from the late queen, going to church on a regular basis does not make one a nicer person. Of that I have proof. One either has a Christian heart or not. Actions speak louder than false genuflecting. Well, my dear, you couldn't be more correct. Paula Venels is the ideal example of that. She became an Anglican priest. She was in line to be Bishop of London. Justin Welby, otherwise known as Wokey Pokey, he was going to push her for all it was worth for her to become Bishop of London, and it failed. And her conduct is so reprehensible. Her attitude is so unchristian. She puts me in mind of a Pharisee or a Sadducee. Also, I had, for 
some years, a very good male friend who, a foreigner who came to this country, met me at a party, attached himself to me and through me he met everybody in London and he's a great social climber. And <clears throat> he was in the financial business and he was a devout Catholic, a member of Opus Dei and always uh, pontificating about Catholicism, etc., etc. He ended up costing me a very great deal of money just to make himself a very little amount of money. Totally unchristian, totally opportunistic, totally ruthless, as morally corrupt as it was possible to be, but all the while beating the Christianity drum. I don't go to church very often, but I'm certainly somebody who believes that there is a God and that I and everybody else has a soul and that it is up to all of us to use our lives in a spiritually sound way. So I get when people say that, you know, Prince William is is not at the moment that into going to church. Well, also, I have to tell you, I used to go to church a lot more before my children were born. But once my children arrived on the scene, they were so badly behaved because they were always playing with each other. And if you kept them apart, they were trying to crawl over you. It was a nightmare. And Sunday was always the nanny's day off. So I would have, and I tried to take them to church. And people at church said, oh, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine. I thought, no, it's not. <laughs> it was ruining everybody's service. So I make that point for what it's worth. So there are good reasons why not everybody takes children to church, even well-behaved children. And also, it's how you conduct yourself and what you believe. And my understanding of William is that he is a very decent person. Some people would actually say he is a true Christian. So that. Cinnamon Girl says, Lady C, I salute you. If we only had more people with honour and integrity like yourself, this world would be a much kinder place. Thank you. That's my aim. To add to life. Can you imagine if the personal details were made public of Catherine's health? what the tramps, evil fans would do to her life. And that's not taking into what the tramp wife would do behind her many masks online. I don't know who the tramp is, so oh, obviously a poor person, if you know what I mean. And knowing how she treated the dying duke and our dying queen, the bullying was beyond cruel. So yes, I quite agree. I don't want Catherine having a target on her pretty head. I think they've suffered enough. Let's leave them in peace to heal and rest. Good sentiments. And we are going to end with Seriously, who says, Dear Lady C, perhaps you could address something I heard on the BBC, I think. Someone has suggested that Harry will be brought in to cover as counsellor when the king goes in next week for his procedure. Prince William has defaulted his duties temporarily 
while the princess recovers. Their children are too young and the next on the list that has to take over when a monarch is made incapacitated, like anesthesia, according to this person, is Harry. Please say this isn't so. Any councillor of state could be tapped, couldn't they? Like Princess Anne or Prince Edward. I understand the Queen could also be considered, but she's more likely going to be at the hospital with her husband, I would think. She's also been better in a more supportive role than in charge. Please, say it isn't so. I don't think anyone could stomach him in that role. If only he could be relieved of those horrible responsibilities permanently. Well, he can't be without a change in the Regency Acts. But the King has worked his way around it by standing him down. So he's not available. So even though he is, in theory, in line to be a councillor of state, in practice he isn't. Also, people don't seem to understand, Catherine has no role at the moment in terms of as a consort she doesn't have specific duties she's not a counselor of state she so william is a counselor of state but counselors of state have to sign documents etc etc they you know it's not a 24-7 job. There is no reason why Prince William wouldn't be able to fulfill his Councillor of State duties if he were called upon to do so while Catherine is in the hospital or recovering. There's that, number one. Number two, the King is going in for a procedure He's not going to be incapacitated long enough for there to be a need to have anybody supplanting him. You know, it's a procedure. It's not the end of the earth. And the fact that it's been announced is partly so that he can shine a light on why it is important for men of a certain age to make sure that they check themselves. And also, it takes the heat off the Catherine situation. Now, the two things have dovetailed neatly coincidentally, but one is welcome in that it deflects undue attention away from the other. So, on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please keep the questions and comments coming in so I know what you'd like us to be addressing. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you care to like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell and take good care.